Hello, listeners, and welcome to this, the 43rd episode of the Heresy Accountability Buddies podcast. I'm Jacob, and this episode I'm joined by... Dan. Jack. Jamie. John. And we're glad to have you with us. Uh, as we do, let's go ahead and uh, get this show on the road. Let's start talking some hobby progress. What's everybody been up to? Yeah, so, um, ironically, I just joined as we started <laughs> the introductions. Because I was um, highlighting the two Typhons, which I built and magnetized. And then I was also highlighting the four Spartans, which are primed and built. Uh, and then the Sponsons for them were magnetized. Uh, and then I found some Xiphons while I was cleaning up, and I got those highlighted and primed. Uh, you find the Xiphons lying around. I, found, I, I, I was... I just found a tray and it had two siphons in it. And then I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'll work on that. Okay, carry on. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Jack. It just happens. I, I just, I'm cleaning up. I'm like, oh, look, two siphons. There you go. I guess I'll work on those too. And so um, I got those highlighted. And then uh, last night I went through four cans of spray primer to get all these things primed, uh, along with nine sponson sets for my javelins. Uh, which I need to magnetize those sponsons sets to fit to the javelins magnets. Uh, I did find out that my predator weapons are reverse magnetized compared to these new sponson weapons, so it's going to be easier for me to go through and break all my old predators apart and then remagnetize them to get them to work. Uh, and then uh, I did all this zenithial highlighting with my new airbrush. Uh, I've got an the Cult of Paint, um, h and uh, Infinity, and then I picked up the Ukrainian one because I wanted a backup brush just in case something happened. And uh, when it came in, my wife and I both kind of don't really like the texture on it because it's a subtractive texture versus the other one's an additive texture. So it's a laser cut kind of snake design in it. And it feels really weird in the hand as well as um, the, the kind of dull matte aluminum parts are kind of weird as well kind of a, an odd texture in your hand when you're just first feeling it when you're using it for you know 30 minutes to two hours like i've been doing it it kind of blanks out in your brain but when you're first holding it compared to the other one it's like a completely different brush it feels so odd um is it it's still an infinity right yeah yeah it's it's got um it came with a different size cup on top and a different size needle and stuff but it's exactly the same brush Took exactly the same parts. Um, and then I also purchased the new book that we're going to talk about that went up for pre-order, The Siege of Chthonia, and bought some more paints to work on my nights with. And then two armatures, my two boxes of armatures finally came in, so I'll finish off all the armatures I need to work on all my nights, which I need to get done for next, not next weekend, but weekend after, the 3rd of June, we're going to have a little gaming event here locally, about a block from my place at the um, the board game rental place. And then did a lot of reorganizing in my room, trying to find space for all these things to fit everywhere, which is why I came across the Xiphons, Jack. It wasn't just like, oh, there's two Xiphons on top of stuff. They're under things. And I guess that's it. I, I still got two or three Kratoses to, to Zenithial Highlight. Oh, yeah, and I took advantage of the Battle Foam sale that happened last weekend for Mother's Day. Uh, about an hour before they closed, after we finished recording, I realized I needed another tray for those Typhons, so I ordered a custom tray using the art that I put up in the group so that I can hold the, the last Spartan and then two Typhons in one tray. And that's everything I've done this week. Yeah, so if I recall, you uh, went for some third-party, like, 3D bits to uh, toggle between the Typhon and the Cerberus. Did I get that right? Yeah, so Artisans of Vol and Michael of RFI worked together to come up with this kind of drop-in Typhon conversion. And it's like a giant triple-barreled plasma cannon that looks really close to the one that's on the... Um, a War Master Titan for Titanicus. Instead of being four barrels, it's three barrels. And what's really cool is it actually fits right into the extra um, armor plating that comes on the in the Typhon Sprue. So the Typhon Sprue actually has the front plow that fit both the Typhon Cannon and the future GW Cerberus Cannon. And this thing fits right in that that plow, right? Like it's made for it. It's beautiful. Yeah, super cool. Nice bit. But that's everything I did. 
Uh, let's go to Jack since I've broken his brain. <laughs> I'll go last. I have a lot of stuff to go over. All right. Dan, what did you do? Mine is very simple. I have done some hiking and running and yeah, no hobby progress for me. Uh, it's likely there will be minimal to no hobby progress for me until probably August. Um, just too focused on Boy Scout stuff. My son's Eagle Projects next weekend and uh, just making sure I'm in shape for backpacking this summer. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll pass it on to Jamie. Um, I actually, this week was my son's last uh, week of soccer, which normally would be a big deal because pretty busy, but I actually got a lot done this week. Um, well, for me, a lot done. Uh, I finished up a tactical squad that I've been working on I put decals on them. Yay! Um, of course, I did do the microsol and microset backwards. Uh, John had to remind me blue before red instead of red before blue. Um, then I like 80% done with a heavy uh, weapon team full of, you know, friend makers, a.k.a. last cannons. Um, and then I actually, uh, the first of, <laughs> first three of uh, 11, uh, Saber tanks, I, I started putting laying down layers on it. I'm about three, four coats in of different layers um, that are with an airbrush. And then I primed and base coated a Kratos, a Chum Wagon Kratos, um, another three Saber tanks, um, a Scorpius, Whirlwind Scorpius, a uh, Whirlwind, or not Whirlwind, a uh, Damocles Rhino Command Tank, the one that I built that's like probably $145 if you priced it out. So normal Forge World price, I guess. And then um, another two regular Rhinos. And um, I started uh, put, putting building uh, two Leviathans. Um, and I apparently have lost, which I don't know how, I have lost a Dark Angels Leviathan. Because I had three and I can only find two. And um, then I also got multiple care packages in this week from... Uh, uh, listeners and part-time contributors and contributors here on the show for Toys for Tots. John sent stuff. Um, Chris Pretty sent stuff. Uh, Lucas sent some stuff, uh, which uh, that's still in transit. Uh, and then Chris uh, Christopher, man, he has set us up uh, with all the other stuff he'd already sent us. He sent me another sixty Mark IV Tactical Marines, uh, a Lancer Knight. And then a bunch of demons. So it's so much stuff that we actually have stuff like a good base for next year, if we if we want to do stuff for toy more stuff for toy or tots. So like we're pretty stocked on on tactical marines for the, at this point. So and I'm very 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 appreciative with that. And I've also I know I've also got some uh, drop pods that are coming in and a uh, is it. A dread claw, which you know everybody hates it, but I kind of needed it for a for something in one of the armies. So, from some uh from one of my friends down in Florida. So, anyways, um, I guess that's it for me. So, Jacob, since J uh Jack wants to go last, no, uh, yes. yeah, yeah, that'll be fine. Um, so it yeah. seems like most of my hobby progress this week was uh working on trying to get some then, uh, armies for other games that yeah, I don't I played uh get those packed up to ship out. Uh right now that's looking like my rebels for Star Wars Legion. Um and otherwise still just kind of working on things around the house, kind of chipping through things there. Uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, it seems like things are going to be going on such that I will not be able to make uh, a couple game stores have done either today or a week from today or doing uh, Battle of Tukia events. Um, and it looks like I won't be able to make those, uh, much like I unfortunately did not make yesterday's uh, event in Martinsville. But um, Question for you, Jacob. Yeah, what's going on? So, um, I know you, Star Wars Legions, right? You said you were working on, or you had stuff that you were moving, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, so I'm I'm moving those Rebels, and uh, I'll still have a clone army uh, that I'll end up playing, because I've got three or four buddies who, who really like the game. Total total left field question, like always. Yeah. What's, what's the new Star Wars game that I saw that's coming out? Uh, Shatterpoint. So where Legion, I would put Legion on like a similar scale to Dust, which is okay. smaller than 
like Warhammer, but mm -hmm. still it's supposed to be a, a more of an army game or a battlefield game than a skirmish game. Shatterpoint is closer to all skirmish all the time. Gotcha. Okay. So I saw the box and yeah. I was like, what is, what is that? Yeah, so, so the, okay. the models, I think, instead of being like 28 mil scale are something like 40 or 50 mil scale. Um, mm -hmm. So they're they're a little larger, they're a little nicer sculpt. Um, gotcha. And and you're generally expected to have few of them, a uh, fewer of them on the table. Hero. It's like a squad. It's kind of yeah. like a kill team or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So you'll have two or three heroes that may be standalone, and like the Republic has single dudes on bases. Uh, but you may notice like three or four battle droids uh, to a single stand, showing that they're just kind of operating in concert uh, in that way. I'm I'm reasonably enough interested in seeing how that game shakes out, even if only just from the paint 10 models, finish an army type standpoint. But uh, ultimately, like, if none of my buddies get into it, I'm not going to be super disappointed to miss out on another game uh -huh. built on the back of novelty templates and novelty dice uh, rather gotcha. than, you know, letting people with brains be adults and, like, figure out math. Gotcha. Man, sorry to sorry to work. sorry to deviate, but I, I figured no, it's all good, man. Yeah, I'm I'm interested to see how those Shatterpoint minis turn out. Um, I haven't been super impressed with what I've seen out of Crisis Protocol, but that may have been because I just didn't yeah. see too many of them like super up close and personal, other than the first wave stuff. Um, but I also say that as somebody who um, oh, this is this is actually a great thing to talk about. Um, for all that I really love to put Games Workshop on blast, um, uh, I, I think one of the recent Legion purchases I had actually gets to gets to take the cake from, from Games Workshop for poor value. So I got uh, Clone Commander Cody, and then I think he came in a box with Waxer and Boil. Those three minis were something like $35 pre-tax. Um, and while that's cheaper than a standalone HQ box for Warhammer, uh, I, I can at least to a certain extent understand that those HQ boxes, um, those sometimes can be full of bits that you can use for other conversions or that you can bring your own conversions to them and do more visually interesting things with. Um, and, and not just that, but even talking in the, like, $30, $20 and $30 is what they used to be, and then now that we're talking like plastic multi-parts, they've kind of ramped up to be in that $40 or $50 kit. Um, you, you still get a large, pretty detailed miniature out of it, um, generally speaking. Like, even for those miniatures that we've highlighted have not been the most detailed, like uh, the, or the librarian that's coming up for, for pre-order here. Mm -hmm. There's still enough bits in there that people are kind of ooing and aahing over it just to take that guy, chop him up, and either spread him across other kits or find new ways to like reinvent that model. Um, but because Legion is so built on you must use the official models, and the official models have official poses, have That's official right. basing, and have <laughs> official silhouettes for the purposes of determining... Um, like who can see who and who can see what and how you intersect with cover... Um, you just don't have that freedom, um, and, and so, like, insult to injury, most of the time, at least the, the HQ kits, uh, come with, like, upgrade cards or something like that, um, and while I want to praise Atomic Mass for moving away from that model, because it seems like they are looking to concentrate more of those upgrade cards into annual or biannual, like, card upgrade packs where you drop 20 bucks instead of having to just play all four factions to get the cards as they come out yeah. you just drop x amount of dollars get the whole card pack for the year um and hey hooray hurrah bob's your uncle you're all set um that's kind of like what dust did yes like, before they died they would yeah. have like axis or allies or whatever and You'd get the whole pack for the year if they did any updates. Well, so. so that that was like your your faction cards. These are like the upgrade cards, but you're uh, you're not wrong there. That's, that's um, what Fallout said they did. Yep, yep. <laughs> that's sure what Fallout said it was going to do. Womp womp. Um, but but anyway, so that's um the 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 fact that I ponied up thirty five dollars for a single HQ model and two can't run them as standalones. They're purchased as unit upgrades technically. Um, but I got three like 
fifth edition size Space Marines for thirty five bucks before tax, um, and and nothing else particularly to show for it. Um, it's it's also the case where these are like injection molded plastics. Yep. And I'm I'm very frustrated. I'm very lost on the value there. Um, and it seems like other people have have expressed the same concern of atomic mass, where at least some of their like single HQ boxes. I think Yoda might have been twenty or thirty, but you got two full Yoda minis in there. Is it perfect? No, but I don't know. I guess I guess I feel like I got a little bit more for my money either with those or or with the standalone kits that had so... Lando or Commander Rex. Um, uh, and that's yeah, just not how it's feeling like here. So kind of, kind of frustrating. Understandably so. Understandably yeah. so. Cool. Um, yeah. so does that bring us, if I'm right though, to, uh, Jack for hobby progress? It does. Sure. Outstanding. Um, so first off, I like to state that I'm an idiot. Um, well, we already knew that. <laughs> uh, this last week I have spent time working on my Imperial Fist army. Mm -hmm. Um, getting a test model fully done for that. Um, with that, I didn't realize that a part of the kit to upgrade them were Mark IV, um, and uh, I needed Mark III heads. Uh, <laughs> so luckily, I just bought a printer, and now I have Mark III heads for all, for all these uh, models. Uh, but I think I posted pictures, in-work pictures in the Discord mm -hmm. about the Imperial Fist. I don't think I posted the done photos yet. I'll post those up. Uh, he's not 100% done, still needs weathering, um, but the scheme is fairly locked in. Um, a lot of uh, inks were involved in the painting of this model, uh, uh, miniature, a lot, more, a lot more than normally so. Um, I have Samus, uh, both uh, low-lighted and highlighted for his red coat uh, for the choice of her top army. Uh, that will be turned into a uh, red painting video. Um, when I when I get him done this hopefully this week, uh, it's going to have to be on Monday, Friday when I when I do that when I do that video. Um, but he's coming along quite uh, not nicely. Um, see here, what else have has a uh, work done? Riggle Dorn has been uh, Dorn has been started. Uh, he's base coated black shiny. Uh, I did not find two Xiphons anywhere I looked. I just double checked during this podcast, and I still cannot find two Xiphons anywhere. Uh, and I'm very upset about about these Xiphon fairy not coming to visit me. Um, did go I to have, event. This my, my, the I have one if you need one. He visited me in 2018, so it may be a long time ago that they visited. I just found the Instagram post where I originally got the phone was December of 2018. So. No, it's not a new fairy. It's an old fairy. He's a, he's an old card. Yeah. New fairies, old fairies. I, I I just I just want I just want Xiphons to show up in my house just magically. Um, I did go to uh, the barn this past mm -hmm. Saturday for their event. Um, moving into talking about that a little bit. Uh, shout out to Joseph from our Discord. He came up. Duncan guilt tripped him into coming. Bribed him into coming. I'm not really sure what the technical de definition happened, but he showed up randomly when he wasn't planning on going. Um, it was two round event, uh, 3,500 points. You got an extra ticket if you went Highlander. Um, I played uh, first game was against Brian OG uh, from the old group um, from um, Michigan. Uh, he was playing Death Guard. Um, I've known him for eight years at this point it feels like and that's the first time i ever actually get to play him that was a fantastic game uh death guard are hard hard as nails um he had a cray to toast um his did his did some work i just think for the 300 and some points they are it's i don't know it's a hard hard pill for me to buy uh he also had a typhon in his list um it losing all the super heavy rolls uh, has hurt that m model more than anything else in this world. I I didn't realize how bad it hurt hurt that model, um, but it was a fantastic game. He ended up winning. Uh, second game was against Duncan because believe it or not, we actually never play each other um, mm -hmm. because we never see each other here. Um, that was a fun game. He was rocking 
uh, Abaddon with a 10-man just Darren Terminator squad with 10 uh, Thunder Hammers. Um, that was that was rude. That's all, that's, all, that's all I can say about it is it was rude. Um, but it was good. Uh, good. Good turnout at the barn. I think we had 10 people playing. Um, like I said, 3,500 point li- li- uh, Highlander. Um, I, I, to fit the um, spirit of it, I did a Highlander list with Ultramarines. Um, looking back on it, since it, since it wasn't mandatory, it was just highly recommended. And I felt like I was the only one there that did a Highlander list. I probably wouldn't do it again. Um, so 3,500 to, points has seemed... So to your point, um, I know that Alex actually did a Highlander list, but he okay. felt much the same you did where... Um, and I know this is going to put him on blast a little bit, but the the EO didn't even bring a Highlander list. <laughs> um, I, I, I was not going to mention that part, part. Um, but you know, I, I see where he was trying to go with it to hopefully take away some of the possible feel bads with everybody still getting new. Um, I feel like there are other point, other ways of doing it. Um, uh, Thirty five hundred points. I still don't have strong feelings about that one either. Yeah, you know, well, let me take it back. I had strong feelings against it originally. Um, looking at it now, I don't feel one way or the other with it. Um, I think if I were to build a list for 3,500 points to play at 3,500 points, I'd probably have a better opinion of it, or, or a fuller opinion of it, not a better opinion of it. Um, because I felt like in my games... It was, well, I had a lot of stuff, you know, l- looking back at last week, talking about Destroyers, I had a Nemesis Destroyer squad uh, who I haven't played ever, uh, so I didn't really know the rules, and they were kind of eff- ineffectual the whole entire, um, you know, turn uh, tournament uh, narrative experience. Um, but I did get to play with Locataris, those, those were fun. Uh, overall, um, the event was good. Uh, big shout out to everybody who showed up. Except for Brian, um, other Brian, not uh, not 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 my buddy Brian, but other Brian. If you listen to this, you know who you are, and I'm glad I said that said that thing to you. <laughs> um, see here, outside of that, um, yeah, that's the that was the hobby progress. I know I'm just gonna take one second before we go into the news, and and just so everybody out here knows, I'm just gonna touch briefly on the book being released because i know it's a very hot take with ver- uh, very many people and i'm trying not to be negative everybody has the rights to feel the f- to feel the way that they're feeling um the biggest thing that i can say about it is vote with your ho- hobby hobby dollars i'm a firm believer in supporting your local game stores uh 100 uh, i would prefer to buy anything i get from a local game store than any place else um that being said i'm you know excited that we're getting books but always remember, no matter what game system you have, much like you know Jacob talking back to the Star Wars uh, uh, minis with the uh, Cody and the thirty-five uh, the bucks for what he got, you know, always vote with your hobby dollars. That's the, that's the biggest thing that I can you know tell tell anybody. So I think that takes us into the news. Would you everybody agree? Uh, yeah, so we did have uh, go up for pre-order this weekend, uh, the new Siege of Chthonia book, as well as uh, the Imperial Fist character, Sons of Horus character, and the Demon Assassin, is that correct? Uh, Demon Assassin, uh, the two characters, yeah, that's it. Weren't it was the rest of the eggs, was that... The dreadnought eggs was that already? Yes. Or, uh, or, so, okay. so those are here as well as the uh, Vindicator went up for pre-order at the same time. Yeah, and we got confirmation that the Vindicator is both Vindicators. Yes, it is. It has the lasers and the big. Oh, very the, nice. Big and, I mean, they they do want seventy bucks for the kit, but at least making it a dual kit makes it a little more palatable. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot cheaper than the Forge World one was, but I mean, I remember. You know, I'll go ahead and old man yells at Cloud moment, but I remember back in fifth edition when we got the apocalypse boxes and you got three Vindicators for hundred and twenty dollars, or or ten uh ten Lehman Russes for a uh, hundred bucks or something crazy oh, like yeah, that. Whatever, 
whatever it was. Yeah, that was a huge box, by the way. Yeah. I, yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, and uh, they also did the spoiler weapons. Were, weren't those also? Didn't they also go up at a? Yep. Are they a whopping twenty five dollars for five? Which is cheaper than we thought it was going to be because it was you know most of their kits are usually in the thirties, so it's not as bad as we thought it was. It's still fairly expensive for what they are. I will admit that, but you know, I could I, say. I could say the stuff from Reddit, but I'm not. So yeah, no, I mean, I'll just we, leave it at that. Y'all understand that it's yeah it, it, what it is. Um, it, it again, you know, it, five packs is a little weird when you need a minimum of ten, yeah. and then the fact that I guess that the, the reason that's five pack is because that way, if you want to do fifteen, you don't have to buy three or you don't have to buy two and then have five left over. Sorry, Jack, I cut you off. I oh, no, no. With that, again. You know, I think the overall arching thing that I'm going to keep hitting with everybody is vote with your hot hoppy dot dollars. Don't let old men scream at scream at cloud because of rain sway you one way or, or the other. Because I'm as sensational, you know, driven as anybody else, and I have my very opinionated opinions of, about it. Um, but I'm excited for I'm excited to get new models. Yeah, I mean we're uh, adults. Here. I mean we and and our, we assume that our listeners are adults and thinking human beings, so they can. We're not trying to sway anyone either way. We're just giving our opinions, and that's why y'all listen to us, and we appreciate it. So, I mean, the the book is GW order only. Yeah, like, direct order. The models are are they the same only, or are they? They're, they're Forge World. World. Everything's Forge World except even the, for even the Typhons. The Ty. Well, I was gonna say the Typhon, the, Typhon, the Vindicator. The Typhons are and the Vindicator are not. They're plastic. And then that'll be normal local game store orderable then i would assume in, in theory yes uh you know with the previous stocking issues there may be some delay but yes um it's still available i just checked both the book and the um the vindicator are still available online at pre-order at, on pre-order status so maybe they have enough of them to go around to fill normal stocking so i don't know yeah i i'm interested to see if because my like local game store hasn't canceled my pre-order yet, so yep. I'm interested to see if they're just going to order it for me, so, and then I'll get a discount or not when I do. Because they can order the Forge World stuff, but what they say is they don't charge, they don't give a discount on it compared right. to everything they else. So. They don't get a markup with that. I mean, I, I worked at a game store for five years, and they what we could do special orders through mail order only stuff, but the issue was that you wouldn't get a discount. It's all, straight. It's like straight retail, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you're just paying and, for the convenience. Yeah, and the way my hobby store works, you get you get hobby dollar, right? You, it's for every hundred bucks, you get ten bucks back, right? So they don't discount anything, right? GW stuff, you're buying normal price, and you get the ten percent. I think they say you don't get that doesn't count toward that, so you don't get the ten percent yeah. off is the way it works. But I, I'm I'm interested to see what they do with it because not message me and cancel the order. And I had messaged them earlier in a week and asked about it. So we'll see what happens. Oh. So, like, one of my friends here locally tried to order it through, like, the the game store that turns, like, crazy volume here. And normally they would be able to get it. And they actually cancel his order because they just, I yeah. guess they don't do the direct order stuff. Yeah. Um, and so. it may be that I get a message tomorrow morning that they cancel my order right. because it was the weekend and whoever was doing ordering didn't send messages out on Saturday either. So I don't it, know. Mostly. It's still, I mean, for every like at at the time we're recording right now, it's still available for pre order. Yeah. And I know, like yeah, the maybe, email I got said, it was shipping out like the twenty seventh. Yeah, so maybe this is a way to get around that issue they had before, where we the U.S. didn't get books for like a month and a half. Maybe so that's, that's kind of my thinking about it because every, I I'd originally heard that it was only direct order only for the U.S. and I was like, that's a little odd. And then I just checked the website; it's it's direct order only for every English speaking country. And when does the oh, EPUB, like, the EPUB goes out this next weekend? Saturday? It's next weekend, I believe, as well. Because okay. I, uh, I think I think you know, per, I think Pretty and Christopher both got the EPUB as well already. Yeah, well, they, had, they don't, don't have, have the book to, in hand, but they pre-ordered the EPUB. I assume you don't have to pre-order the EPUB, right? You should be able to no, they, on a Saturday well, noon. Right. It's gonna sell out. Here, right? gonna sell out. Yeah, it's gonna sell out of digital number <laughs> ones and zeros, man. You know how it is. They're very limited. <laughs> They so did like, that before. I do think it's it's reasonable enough to to bring up as as we talked about the uh, chainsword and pistol pack going online. I know we brought it up 
uh, I think it was part of last week's show, or maybe it was two weeks ago, when uh, the Command Rhino went up for sale. Um, and we indicated that that was frustrating, that they wanted something like half again as much uh, to, to get you those bits relative to what these bits cost, or, or relative to what the core kit cost. So when you consider that 20 Tactical Marines right now are... 80 US dollars to equip them all with bolt pistol and chain sword would be another 120 US dollars. Um, I think that that is telling of something, uh, and I think that definitely tracks with our sentiment on the show about the Command Rhino. Uh, we strongly encourage uh, people as able to shop third party bit sellers. Uh, and, and people who make compatible conversion bits, uh, and, and you may not only find that, that you get more value for your money there, uh, but that sometimes you can find options that sometimes have a little more character. Uh, World Eaters players come to mind uh, with chain axes. So, I mean, as I said, I, there's a Reddit thread about this, and for the price of a uh, the spoiler squad, like, fully equipped or whatever, you could buy a 3D printer, so... Just, just say it. Yep, yep. Certainly, certainly worth worth noting or considering. But uh, otherwise, um, I mean, uh, I, yeah, I, I mean, I like, want to jump. I want to jump onto the back of that because I built my Damocles Command Rhino a long time ago for Ultramarines, and I went with the plastic Mars pattern, but yeah. I put the Cromlech extra armor side mm-hmm. bits, the Cromlech dish, and then the Forge World. Um, you know, Mars pattern, square, front and doors, right? Which, yep. um, and then there's a plastic guy with a, uh, either a multi-melter or a bolter. I think I just went bolter because I went cheap with the uh, ultramarine rules for shooting things. And so, you know, I have $130 Damocles as well by the time you add up all yeah. those open bits and everything. But... I have never seen another one exactly like it on the table. Right, so, right. No, yeah, yeah. That's just the same thing yeah, with mine. True. I mean, like I had that's Mars true. plastic. True. Yeah, I have a Mars true. plastic, uh, the reinforced armor, uh, a big dozer blade, uh, Forge World dozer blade, and then I have uh, Forge World doors and front. I think the front off a, uh, a Scor- whirlwind Scorpius because it's thicker armor looking. And then I have. Uh, I think actually the old old school Damocles that actually had the um the interior. Oh okay. it had like control panel seats and a seated marine at the control panels with the radar dish on the top. I, w- I went with the old school razorback uh plastic yeah. uh bulldozer blade because it just looks cool. The little the little for- the fork. No, the big the big flat one. Maybe it wasn't even a. Maybe it wasn't the Razorback. I forget where it came from. But there's a was, for, there's a Forge World one that's a huge blade. That's yeah. what I have. This yeah. one. This one's plastic. One was for a while, okay. and then Comlec made a bunch of ones too. So yeah. it's it kind of depends on you know whichever way you want to go. And and up armor and those does make it look really cool as far as like drawing your eye because yeah. in reality that'd be the most boring tank ever. Because it doesn't technically have a gun or anything like that. Right, we've, right, right. You've seen them in, in real battlefields. They blend in because they're supposed to. They're not supposed to be a, a blatant target. But, I mean, like, for, like, if you, I mean, everybody knows. I have the uh, the Rhino used car sales lot going. And, like, I think I have at least not, at least 12 Rhino chassis right now. So, like, they're all Mark 1 uh, Cs other than this one Damocles. So, yeah, yeah. That is, uh, yeah, it's one of the old. Is that the metal one or the plastic? Plastic. So okay. I don't remember. I thought it came with a Rhino chassis kit in the first mm. place, but I could be wrong. I think it's the original Razorback, is what that is, or original Predator, one of the two. Yeah, there's also the GW Big Store or st- flagship store exclusive Damocles. Yep, with and, the Command and, Land Raider. Yep. yep. And so you could steal parts off of that, too. There's so many ways to make a Damocles, which. I think that was our main complaint last time was like, yeah. because there's so many other options, why are you charging so much for a yeah, radar dish in a, in a spare tire storage? I can, I, there's also one other thing I want to say of all the things that sold out this weekend that got released, it was the all together, um, uh, contempt, uh, faction or legion, uh, contemptors. Those sold out. 
like before anything else sold out, <laughs> which I just like. I guess they ran out of core contemptors. I didn't. Because... I didn't do the math. So, how much savings were, or is there savings for buying the egg and the plastic kit versus just the? I think egg? it's actually. I think it's actually more expensive. <laughs> it's it's the same. Well, it's it's the same cost for buying it separately, but it's if you compare it to what the old Forge World Rhino or Forge World. Contemptor. Uh, by themselves cost plus a couple weapon arms because you gotta think you get yep. multiple yeah. weapon arms in there now. It's not that terrible. I think they're ninety I think on lot for 90. GW had them listed at ninety or ninety nine dollars. I thought it was that was I saw. But. Yeah. But they were sold out. It's like it's I was on the website right as soon as it opened up with the new releases and every one of them was already sold out. Yeah, and then I, I haven't checked today, but I know when I went later in the day, and you said that all the eggs were still available from Forge World, so they just sold right kids. <laughs> right. So I'm guessing yeah. they're. I, I know that stores have had a lot of trouble stocking contemptors for, and uh, Leviathans actually too. Um, but so I'm guessing they just don't have the contemptors to go with the egg um, torso. So, anyways, we could we can go on. I'm sorry, we're I don't we're not I'm not trying to beat a dead horse. I'm just. Like that's what has happened so far. This no, week. I, I think we've made we've made real and valid points here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like yeah, the, the vindicator. The vindicator. I've actually. I mean, it's okay. Rules wise, it's bad. <laughs> like, it gets bad in this edition. But I actually kind of dig the tank, and I'm really thinking about getting one just because, like, yeah, I might want the laser destroyer version of it. So yeah, that's me. I've got the six other one, older ones with all demolishers and I really don't want to go through and try to figure out some way to break them and then re yeah. the, the hokey thing. I may just buy a couple of that one just to have the laser destroyers exclusively. Yeah. yeah I'm looking at the plastic sprue, it looks like it will it'll be fairly easy to magnetize. It it yeah. should because it's the it's the same rhino chassis, predator chassis, whatever. Oh. Like it basically You'll get this with the core two chat core two sprues, and then there'll be one additional sprue that goes up in the front. So. The only thing that I found in the new kits that's been hard to magnetize was the Typhon, and that's because I wanted to have the gun swappable and the prow swappable. Yeah, everything else is so smooth, and so I what just a- drilled and countersunk the magnets, and now I'm gonna have to scratch build something on the inside to hold the gun up because there's nothing really supporting the gun other than the the hinge itself. My friend uh, Blake here locally, he got a, a Cerberus instead of the Typhon. He wanted the Typhon, but he got the Cerberus and uh, built that out. But he made it so that he could swap in the Typhon gun if he really wanted to. So, but I mean, it's all—it's literally the same kit as the Spartan. <laughs> yep. It's literally—I think it's one extra sprue or one different sprue that instead of having all the last cannons, it's got that one. Yeah, of you the actually get the, the in part it. that holds the turret last cannon in. Yep. You get that part extra. So, it's, I don't know. It's cool. I, for me, I think it's actually a pretty cool looking kit. I've always, like, kind of liked them. And I've had, only time I've ever built them before is for uh, an Iron Warriors list. So. Yep. All right. So, with uh, the new uh, new announcements, new pre-orders behind us, uh, do we want to move on to tonight's, uh, maybe you haven't seen them on the table ever, maybe you haven't seen them in a while unit. Oh, we still got next Sunday's. So. Next Sunday stuff coming up. Too. Oh, what's coming up next Sunday? The Librarian. other stuff. The other stuff that they didn't release this Sunday. No. <laughs> the librarian model, right? Yes. Uh, and then all those Seraphon that make really good Necromunda models. Uh, and you also get the Decurian Sagittar, the Imperial Fist guy, the Imperial Fist, and Sons of Horus. Torsos and shoulder pads come back. Yeah, the for like Mark, shoulder pads come back. Yeah, for yeah, like for two, three, four. Yep. And those are so, those are going to be made to order the old stuff coming back. So, like, if you do order them, it'll be like, well, okay. They say it's going to be 180 days at Adepticon. They actually had every one of them, but they were the old style packaging. So I don't know that's if that's the, other the big thing that deal. Came back with the pre-orders this weekend was a lot of the older Space Marines. Like yes, like Kronos the, the other stuff. Yeah, the uh, sixth edition stuff. Yeah, because yeah, I saw that too. It was a huge set. It's like four hundred and thirty-five dollars made to order. 
Yeah, they're a lot more expensive than they were when they first came out. But it's definitely, if you want to add some spice to your models, that Captain Cronus is like one oh, of the yeah. first Mark III models that GW made. And with new Decurion rules coming out, you might want a tank commander looking cool. Yep. And in fact, that's what Blake, my friend Blake did. He actually got a, found a Cronus just to have as a, as a tank commander for a, for one of his yeah. tanks. So, yeah, okay. it's a pretty cool model. I never bought a Kato Sicarius back in the day. Maybe now should be the time. <laughs> Kato Sicarius is the best example I think I've ever seen of uh, the way Marines allegedly used to be in at least like 4th edition. He had a power sword, he had a plasma pistol, he had all the things a good marine boy should have to ignore armor saves. Uh, but at least by the time I showed up, even as early as 5th edition, like, dude was kind of flailing, struggling to catch up. See, I just have that YouTube video stuck in my head from years ago of, oh, the case of Sicarius, and the case of Sicarius will do this, and not whatever <laughs> That's, it was that's what he does in the books. Like, he just, he's like, always speaks. yeah third person it's really weird he constantly has to say his own name did it has he ever lost in the books as well too like literally he any anything he's involved in he always wins it's yeah it's like a, a standoff thing back when he didn't have a model and he was just the battle from a crag guy he like fought to a standstill and i think that's as far as back as he'd ever lose okay yeah because like any any space rain battles book he showed up and he always like if he didn't win, it's like a moral victory. Yeah. <laughs> and oh yeah, the the librarian that's coming out next week. It's the one that we talked about earlier. That's got the cast the hands or cool axe. Yeah, and then he's got the the weird psychic hood that kind of looks like a squat armor. So, but he's got a, it's a Mark Six helmet too. He doesn't actually have like a traditional uh, psychic hood. It's like integrated into his actual armor, like his battle suit. Yeah, I like that dude. I think it has good potential for conversions. Yep, it's got some good parts in it. Mm -hmm. All right, so now I think we can go on to the models we never see, but we often hear about. <laughs> models we never see, but seldom hear about. Uh, oh. The the one that we actually brought up last week as a pursuant point to, I believe it was Duncan asking, would you see destroyers more if they were a fast attack choice rather than an elite choice? Uh, so uh, if they were competing with seekers instead of competing with vets. Um, Seekers are another unit that, relative to last edition, seems to have kind of been left in the dust. Um, they lost scoring. They, uh, lost, uh, some of the benefits of their marked for death special rule. Um, but what they did keep was weapons, or, I'm sorry, ballistic skill 5. Um, Now, so... I will say, I will say, I'm putting an asterisk here, okay? A lot of people have never seen these. At Adepticon, I actually saw a lot of these <laughs> guys. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if that's uh, pursuant to uh, the uh, we may have missed it at the time uh, combi melta or combi weapon change where you get to 40k style fire both halves of the combi and people used to have them, or what do you think that was? Um, I, think it was the, I think it was the BS5, to be honest with you. I, what I saw in face scans was Nemesis Boater with yep. precision shots, yep. is what I saw. So I personally really don't like these guys as a Nemesis Bolter platform, but we'll talk about that here. So for starters, 105 points gets you five models on the table. The next five are 15 points a model. They are skirmishers. They do have the infiltrate special rule. They have marked for death, which if I'm right, this edition marked for death is uh, when you fire at your preferred target, you get to reroll to wound rolls of one. Uh, apparently getting twin-linked on BS5 was just a little too good relative to last edition. Um, they come as standard with a Kraken Bolter, Bolt Pistol, Frag and Crack Grenades, and Power Armor. Um, the other big standout on their sheet is, uh, outside of Infiltrate, that they do have Precision Shot for Native. Uh, they can buy lesser combis at 5 points, bigger combis at 10 points... Um, if you chose for some forsaken reason, you could swap out their very expensive, uh, Kraken Bolters with Chainswords for free. Uh, please don't do this. 
Um, you can take uh, heavy chain swords on everybody. Uh, you can also take nemesis bolters, but they are a whopping 10 points a model. And for nemesis bolters, I know part of what you're paying for is the sniper rule to allocate your wound where you choose. And given that these guys already have precision four, um, that's, that's a little impalatable to me. Um, if you leave the bolters on them, they can take bayonets or chain bayonets. Uh, the sergeant can buy artificer armor and a few different pistol options, as well as power weapon, power fist, or lightning claw. Um, so when when you figure nice. that like a fully kitted out set of these is going to be, I think, 180 points, assuming no combis or anything else, um, they're not wildly expensive, but I, I don't know that I would call them cheap. And when you consider that buying 10 Nemesis Bolters on them, uh, you lose Shroud Bombs and Line relative to a Recon Squad, but you do pick up um, <laughs> Ballistics 5. So I, I guess there's some give and take on the on the value that you put on Ballistics 5, but I, I guess I just don't know that that's, that that's particularly worthwhile to me. Um, the fancy thing about them is their Kraken Bolter. Uh, the Kraken Bolter has a native profile of Strength 4, AP 4, uh, Rapid Fire at a 30-inch range. Uh, that is the standard Kraken Bolts. So you do get the AP 4 kick from your AP 5, uh, and you do get a little longer range, so it means you rapid fire at 15 instead of at 12. Uh, but overall, not exactly potent. Uh, they can swap these, uh, or I'm sorry, they can choose two other alternative rounds to fire. One of which is the Tempest Rounds. These used to be a small blast, but now they are Strength 3, AP 6, Assault 3 with Ignore's Cover. Uh, John, were Militia in 5-up native or 6-up? Um, for the most part, 5 Okay, um, so <laughs> AP six to me is not worth a whole lot. Um, just, I think just the, like the beasts had six ups. Like, yeah, that sounds right. He has it. Um, or you can use the Scorpius rounds. The Scorpius rounds are very different from last edition. Last edition, I think they were strength five, AP three, but heavy one. Uh, this edition, they are strength five, AP four, assault one, breaching four plus. Um, that breaching is a pretty good kick, so it means that by the time you shoot, uh, you will get about five shots on any target you choose. Two and a half of those will be breaches, uh, and then you'll get, depending on if it's a marked target, uh, you'll get another three wounds downrange, give or take. Uh, and one and a half of those are going to be breaches. So for the low, low price of 180 points, you can put four breaches against a unit, um, but they're not going to have any strength eight behind them. They're not going to have anything shiny or fancy. And if you choose to take combi weapons, you lose the Kraken rounds, as in, like, you lose all three of those specialty rounds, and you drop to just a bolter with the second half. I honestly thought that I was going to be more impressed with these guys, to the point where I started wondering, uh, coming from an Alpha Legion perspective, are Headhunters a trap compared to these guys? Um, and that's kind of a complex thing to try to solve. Ultimately, Headhunters, by the time you take one multi melta on the squad... Uh, end up about 60 points more, maybe 65 more uh, than what these guys end up running you. But the trade-off is that they are relentless, and even though their weapons are only breaching 6, uh, they do get to rapid-fire those, and they always have twin-linked, and they always have preferred enemy infantry. Um, so even though you would lose out on, let's say you chose to put combi melta or combi plasma on these guys and set them against a dreadnought uh the dreadnought sure you'll get to reroll your ones to wound against but uh you're not exactly going to be doing super stellar damage to that dreadnought other than like swoop in pop the pop the melta half of your combis and then and then see or or hope if that clears them out and if it does awesome you have successfully traded a 180 point seeker squad give or take, 
for the 180-ish point Dreadnought. So you're not coming out ahead, uh, but it means that you're not being the bad dude uh, and running Laz Cannon teams. Um, I know some people really do like to, like, infiltrate these and use them as ways to harry or harass Laz Cannon teams, especially because the Scorpius rounds are assault. Um, but at, at least, like, again, talking from the headhunter position, the fact that they come dual armed and, and with power daggers, no less, even though it's not perfect, it means that they are two attacks base, I think, three on the charge... Uh, four for dual armed, or even if they're only, I think they're one base, two for dual armed, three for the charge. You're still able to find 15 hits, which turn into five rends because of those power daggers. Um, and that's that's assuming you're charging another weapon skill four unit. Uh, but that's still the case where it leaves you in a position to really well cope with uh, enemy non-close combat troop choices and, and cut them down because those daggers do get sudden strike one so they pick up to I-5 on the charge. Um, but but as it stands, I, I guess I probably personally put a little higher value on destroyers than what I put on these guys. What are you guys thinking? So going back to this past weekend, the Nemesis Destroyer Squad, as I ran them, were 270 points. How I would run Leaker, the Seeker Squad is 300 points. That's with uh, 10 Nemesis Bolters and a um, Augury sc uh, Scanner. And with the prevalence of Night Fight that are just in the base rules, base games, like they're worth every single point, in my opinion, of that. I, I think Augury Scanners are really worth it. Uh, and I, I find myself taking them on any time I've got a squad that really wants to shoot, and especially if that squad wants to shoot at greater than 24 inches. I find that to be a, a really worthwhile buy. And then depending on, on your army list and composition, I'm even finding a lot of times when the Nuncio box ends up being something that I start, I start jotting down on units, because it keeps your leadership protected. Uh, when you have night fight, um, and I know that was something that early on when we first got the rules that we were, I was very hot and heavy on was the um, the nuncio box, and I don't, yeah. I don't know, like a lot of people have kind of, I guess, cooled on it. Maybe it's coming back around with how prevalent uh, the night fight uh, night lord meta has gotten starting to get. So, so remind me of something. So these guys can take a rhino or a proteus, right? Does the infiltrate convey this addition or not? I don't remember the way that works. Uh, yes, I believe it does. So you can infiltrate them in a rhino, drive the rhino forward, disembark them, and then shoot the Scorpius rounds. You absolutely can. And and I suppose that also is worth highlighting for for John saying that a lot of militia was was five up saves. Uh, and I'm assuming there were probably more than a few units in like Carapace Armor or old four up saves. Solar Ox have a lot Oh, of Solar Ox, right, right. So if you're a traitor player or you find that your group has, like, one dude doing traitor Solar Ox, uh, the Kraken round might might start going up in value for you there, too, just as a as a way to get AP4 access. Yeah, it's just so weird to, to think about that because there's so much other AP4 out there. Like, why are you buying a unit that takes up this slot for that? Like, why aren't you just... I mean... Accidental heavy bolter somewhere is going to do the same thing. It's not as plentiful because it's not a purposeful unit, but to me, it just seems odd to have to. You're a marine player. Are you really having that much trouble with AP four <laughs> and shooting things? Yeah, that's that's certainly fair. Um, so, I I don't know the the thing that I end up looking at for for my destroyers now. Admittedly. Uh, in my in my Alpha Legion list, I'm kind of going above and beyond, and I'm I'm selecting the the Volkite pistols for them just to just to see what happens. Um, but I could definitely see where the the Ultramarines, like the the thing you're gunning for there, is just hoping that those Nemesis bolters uh, or or Nemesis rounded bolters, I I forget exactly what they are, um, end up causing a lot of pinning checks. Um, and it seems like that that that's a little overcosted for what they offer, given to where other units can take Nemesis bolters. 
I don't know. They shut down my full Mentaris for two rounds in one of my games from failing pinning tests. Oh, your guys did, or or other pinning they, options, enemy pinning options. They pin me. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I'm saying though. Those those Nemesis bolters are are generally in a pretty reasonable position to be able to do that to full Mentaris if you don't have an independent character attached to them to buff them oh, up to lead nine. And even then, you're you're shooting those generally from out of range of what the full Mentaris, unless they're able to like Let's say you're playing Alpha Legion, you, like, infiltrate them into the middle of the table. But even still, that's a pretty niche case where where you're finding that, that you've got to get into position, hunker down there, and then start firing out a line of sight, and, and you've got to be able to get there to be able to accomplish that. So. so what about... So I'm not sold on Seekers, but I think the only time I saw Seekers last edition was in zm and i'm curious where you have less units and maybe not as much but want more flexibility maybe you come in and you take a couple different types of um you know combi weapons in a seeker squad and you can be a little more jack of all trades set up i don't know just a thought you're not wrong but i I think the the point of me like bringing destroyers to light is the fact that you can run ten jump pack destroyers for I think they're like two oh five so they're just twenty five points more. No, you so, don't. Go ahead. <laughs> I I wasn't on last week's show, and if I was, I'd be like, yeah, I have thirty destroyers that I've got with jump packs for a specific build out of my Dark Angels. But whatever, because I, I'm I'm absolutely crazy because I just don't care at this point. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going full rule of cool. So. You've decided that sleep is for lesser mortals as well. So exactly, I, I get and, it. And I'm literally, I'm literally drinking bur- 110 proof bourbon straight while we're recording. So. It's the only thing that keeps him running. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that that for me, like just looking at the destroyer assault squad for the fact that you're. You're paying 25 extra points. Admittedly, no, you can't do the the precise shot trick. But I think your average damage output in a game is probably going to be pretty similar. Even just shoot the pistol twice and then charge the target and try to mop them up with with rad grenades in the aftermath. Um, and, And I think that that would especially, you know, where we talk about how oh, you can get these AP4 rounds, and that'll do some things against Militia and Solar Ox. If the whole army's weapon skill 3, you're going to do proportionally more by shooting and then charging rather than just ignoring their armor saves in the shooting phase. I mean, like, no offense. Like, if you're facing a lot of Solar Ox, wouldn't it be more advantageous? Like, not with this squad, obviously, but, like, just to take, like, rotor cannons? No. Um, maybe I I guess Accur- or, I'm going I'm going accuracy by volume. I mean, like oh, that's fair. Like, yeah, just what, because your your strength what, three, you'll wound on fours. What's AP on the Volkite they come with, right? So would you be better off doing combi Volkite than the? Than so the regular you can definitely anyway? get a little bit more by volume by going combi Volkites, but genuinely, I think once you start talking combi Volkites you're going to be better served just taking vets. You're not going to get the BS5 kick native, but if you take, like, a tech marine, you can just shove a Cognus Signum in there. You can get the BS5 that way. Congratulations. You're now losing out on infiltrate and marked for death. And sure, you may even be more expensive, but I think the trade-off that you're going to get by being twice as durable and you're having Relentless and you're still a bolt pistol and chainsword behind those Volkite weapons, again, for where I say, like, uh, very going very sports ball term here, uh, you, you got to follow through. You can't just watch the ball go into the goal. You've got to run it all the way down until the play stops. Yeah, I, is. I see it. Um. I, if if we've had listeners who've had strong success though running seekers uh, and they want to talk about how they've been able to use seekers to like harass enemy las cannon batteries, uh, I'd be super interested to hear it. I would absolutely love to hear that somebody has had a better experience on the tabletop than what 
I worry things look like sitting in my chair. I mean, I know at Adepticon, what I was seeing is I wasn't seeing 10-man squads. I was seeing 5-man squads. And I'm guessing that they all had, most of them had the Nemesis bolters on them. So, like, what are we talking? 105 points plus, is it 10 per each Nemesis? Does that sound right? Uh, yeah, they're 105 up front. So you're like, then, yeah. you're looking at like 145 to, you know, 155. What, 160, yeah. yeah, 165 if you so buy maybe, the Aubrey maybe people, scanner on them. So maybe people were using them because they just had, like, points left over, and instead of, they are just trying to get another squad or something like that in there that yeah, but, you mean... But if you're doing that, take the the attack squad with right. the bolters and get the you know the line squad in there, right? Yeah, I mean, true. That, that's what I look at, you know, because when you started talking about it, I'm like, you know, there's a lot of neat choices here. I'm like, yep. I'm building a recon squad for the Blood Angels. Would it make sense to take these guys over recon marines? And right. I think the answer is no, <laughs> you know. No, I mean, like, I understand what you're saying. I totally understand what you're saying. I'm just saying that's what I was seeing yeah. from armies. And, I mean, you didn't see, like, them in every army, but, like, I actually yeah. noticed them because I was seeing them with decent regularity. Let's, let's say that. Um, so so what I'll say is, and, and this is something that, you know, it's part of the reason why, as an EO, we didn't start tweaking any any rules or go too nuts into any of that stuff. Maybe people were just trying them out still, right? You know, Maybe. something new and different. And, you know, you've got some points. You throw some models in there. Everybody, we know that you don't want to just throw another contemptor in there or you already filled up your contemptors, depending on how you're making your list. Throw in some seekers and see how they do. And maybe the results are on the table we're seeing as... The same thing we're saying we think we see, and it just was people trying it out for something different as they're building new armies too, right? You know, yeah. it's early in a early in the game meta for sure. Still, you know, even a year in, I think to a point, or for sure, you know, big event wise, it wasn't adaptive. So, you know, that could be too. Yeah, I mean, it, that makes sense too. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. Like as Jacob was saying, let people, if people, listeners, if you've got some insight onto it, let us know. You know. Maybe we're missing something that's obvious. That Jamie, I think you may have already hit the hit the nail on the head for me there. Where uh, people have not had the experience that I've had, where they can no longer trust five Nemesis bolt rifles, um, and they probably just figure that between the the BS five and everything else that that you can make it work on that. And even if you just force a pinning check because you've killed a single model. Uh, or or caused an unsaved wound on a given unit, um, the the value goes way up there, uh, especially if you're not playing with some of the restrictions that I have to play with in terms of either limited heavy support choices uh, or or just limited on personal model selection. So that that also means that you don't have the same imperative priority that I have on putting uh, javelins generally because most of my lists feel like they disallow tanks. Um, to, to load javelins in there. Is that a, is that a Thunderhawk there, Jack? Stormbird. Oh, oh, not, not just the Thunderhawk, but his bigger, uglier brother. You, you got the, the big cart at Home Depot today, is what you're telling me. You didn't get the normal basket, you got the big old man, uh, dolly cart right there. I, 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 I dabble around with some stuff. (laughs) You know, that's an interesting, I wonder what the math works out, because I think I, I figured out that, it's nine um, recon marines to reliably kill the augury scanner in one turn. And I wonder what the BS5 changes that math to, how many you need. Because that's what I'm putting the recon squad on the table for, is um, the you know, scanner on the revelations I need as yeah. few guys intercepting me as possible. <laughs> it's, so so I wonder how, how that math works out with the BS5 instead of BS4. Obviously, it's better but i wonder if it gets down to five guys can reliably kill that one guy that's interesting um and this also kind of like go ahead i just said it's too late to do math tonight so i'll figure that out later (laughs) 
Yeah, so this also kind of opens us up for uh, another segment that we'd had suggested, which is to start uh, picking and prodding some of the console choices. Uh, and we figured yeah. that since we just finished talking the Seeker, uh, we should talk the Vigilator. The Vigilator's kind of a super-duper Seeker, because he <laughs> gains uh, Marked for Death and Master Sniper, and he may get uh, Scout or Infiltrate uh, when requested. Uh, pretty cool. Um, keep in mind that is a May, so if you were attaching him to a unit that does not have Scout or Infiltrate, um, that can... Uh, I think Infiltrate all models must have it. I don't know about Scout, um, but that that is an option there. Uh, the Vigilator, uh, because of his Master Sniper Rule, says yeah, when making shooting attacks with any weapon that has the Sniper Rule... They become Rending 2+, plus and Shellshock 1. So, uh, not only do you get a way, way higher accuracy with that Rend, um, but when they dome that character, they're going to impose an additional minus 1 on that pinning check. Um, if the weapon already had Rending and Shellshock, uh, they do not stack. Um, they simply use the highest of the two values. Uh, the Vigilator gains a Mastercrafted Nemesis Bolter and melt bombs at no additional cost. May not select a bike, jet bike, or jump pack. Uh, that was the big thing that I recall them uh, kind of patching up from last edition is I used to take uh, for or encourage people to take Vigilators in a lot, a lot of lists to try to make Assault Marines work because you could jet pack them uh, and use that scout move to just try to cheat your Assault Marines that little bit up the table and try to help them out. Uh, uh, but that is gone, unfortunately. Uh, well, I was talking about interesting conversion you could do with like jet bikers and, and having that sniper rifle. I never got around to finishing building mine, so I'm not that broken up that it got axed. Yeah, um, and I, I think it's worth pointing out that uh, this guy uh, is kind of one of, uh, relatively speaking, the, the boogeyman for this edition. Uh, he does have to fire with the rest of your squad, but depending on who or what you've put him with, uh, the opportunity cost on that shooting is very, very low to just identify, ah, oh, that's your tech marine over there in your Legion Heavy Support Squad. Well, if I just remove him, then you don't have a Cognus Signum, and I really hope you bought an Augury Scanner for the rest of the unit, uh, unit to be able to fire here at night. Yeah, my friend who's dipping his toe into heresy started buying parts for Mechanicum Army, and then he realized he wanted to do Marines more, so he started buying Word Bearers this week, but even he's starting to notice, like, man, there's going to be a lot of unit attachments because of the apothecaries and tech Marines and all that stuff, yeah. so it's, it's neat seeing someone coming in from hasn't played in a while, noticing all the same stuff. Yeah, uh, and, and again, for those of you who feel like you have a great unit on foot that you would really like to bring and to get working, um, giving the ability to, uh, you know, uh, why don't you guys uh, talk about some things? And I'm actually going to double check on the scout rule while I'm here. So every time I hear the term Vigilator, I think of the Violator from the Sp <laughs> uh, Spawn movie with that big, <laughs> big close clown. I am the Violator, and I violate. That's just what I think when I hit John the Leguizamo, <laughs> Jack, John Leguizamo, and that's what yeah. I mean. <laughs> or not build one for your army that uh, word association it it, it it makes it makes me want to have that as my tagline of i'm the vigilator well, and i vigilate things there, there was a vigilator in the comics that was it was a group of demon brothers yeah they were vigilator the, violator yeah. and i forget the other ones there yeah the violator had like multiple demon brothers that were all started with v or something like that nice yeah the visualizer. No, that probably wasn't one. So, uh, having taken that brief dig into the rules, yes, as long as at least one model has scout, <laughs> the unit gains scout, uh, and, and does get to, therefore, scout forward. Um, so if you have a unit where you're like, gee, these guys are great, I just wish they got across the table a little bit faster, uh, you could certainly take a vigilator with them, um, Depending on their guns, you might be missing out or, or losing some of the best parts of the Vigilator. Uh, and I think that kind of underscores some, some weirdness, uh, that he cannot gain both Scout and Infiltrate. But, 
Uh, the melter bomb thing seems a little odd to me to just randomly throw on there. It's like, oh, we just need something for some points. Um, but, I, I can see a certain amount of it. So the, the Vigilator previously used to have a, like, sabotage rule. Uh, yeah. And so they've kind of kept him as this, like, operative guy that everybody can take. Um, the, the Alpha Legion do have their own saboteur, uh, who can only join, I think, recon squads and headhunters. Uh, he does not have the Master Sniper rule, but he's got a couple other rules kind of showing off some some Alpha Legion prowess as far as, um, like, he brings Shroud Bombs to the party. Uh, and sh stacking Shroud Bombs with your Alpha Legion rule is pretty great. It's pretty super. Until you start causing rules arguments and trying to figure out which one took precedent. And... Uh, I believe they stack, actually. But well, that's the question. Yeah, yep. Yeah, certainly, certainly does open that can of worms. Uh, otherwise, um, do we have anything else worth uh, worth talking about, worth floating before we wrap this episode up? Hearing none, I will head that way. Uh, thank you again for joining us for this, the 43rd episode of the Heresy Accountability Buddies podcast. I'm Jacob, and this episode I've been joined by... Dan. Jack. Jamie. John. John. And we're yes. glad to have you with us, listeners. Uh, remember, stay accountable to your hobby and to your buddies, and we'll see you here next time.